Hello everybody, this is Sue, and I'm here to share with you a little project that I came across and actually created from an advertisement. This is the advertisement that I found amongst my things when I was purging, and I'm sure I kept it for a good reason, but it's a folded little advertisement instruction. And I thought that would make a really cute little journal tuck. So I didn't want to make it quite that size um, as far as the paper is concerned. So I designed my own. And as you can see, I wrote down the instructions or the, the uh, kind of instructions and the items that you might need or find helpful to do this. And I'm just going to run through really quick. I have everything cut, uh, most of it folded, but I'm going to just show you really quick how I did it. And this is one that I um, put together. This is actually the front. And then when you just hold the front and back pieces, it unfolds and it folds right back into itself. And then you can tuck it in a pocket or you can make, um, not or, but you can also make a belly band for it um, and then embellish it with a well, item of your choice. I made a couple of these for friends. I think I did one for Dana um, at Dana's Making a Mess Again. And I think I sent one to Maria at crafty world anyway and I did butterflies and so I think I attached a butterfly to the top on the belly band and the belly band really doesn't matter um, size wise it's a preference if you don't want to cover up a whole lot of your design on your cardstock you might want to stay small so I did this one a quarter of an inch and I'll probably add in a little embellishment of some sort there as you can see you can use a wider this is three quarter inch by five inch and I think that's what I put for the belly band here. And as you can see, it just covers up a lot more of your um, decorative paper. So you might not want to use that wide of a piece, but that's really up to you. But it's a five inch strip for this particular size um, card that I did. So let's go ahead and get started. I already cut everything out and I can we lay these or unless you want to maybe take a screenshot of this um, and that way you'll have it to kind of reference by um, but for now I need to kind of move it out of the way so hopefully you can get a screenshot of that so let's go ahead and get started I um already had my paper here and I cut my paper it's eight by nine and three quarters and then I took my scoreboard and on the eight inch side which would be the short side you would score it at with your bone folder score it at two inches at four inches and at six inches, all the way down. Then we're gonna turn it once to the right. And on the nine and three quarter inch side, we're going to score it at three and one quarter. And again, at six and a half. And that's gonna give us all of our folding lines. Once that's done, we're gonna take our paper and I've already folded this one, so it'll be really easy to show you. So we're going to, I folded it this way. We're going to fold the paper in half. And you're going to crease it. And then you're going to fold the top side down to the fold you just made. And you're going to crease it again. Then you're going to fold your paper, turn your paper over, just flip it to the left once, 
and you're going to fold that other top side down and crease it. Then once you've done that, you're going to turn this. It's easier for me to fold it towards myself, so that's how I choose to do it, whatever works for you. And on this other score line, you're going to fold this down, and we're going to really crease this well on all three sides. Then we're going to flip it over once more, and we're going to crease it down the other way. And again, crease all of your lines really well, all your sides. So when you flip your, you're going to have like a N, N, and when you unfold it, you'll see it wants to kind of stay folded into itself. And you can even without the decorative paper on it, it still will fold pretty simple. I used um, not just regular printer paper because I thought it would be really fun to use this for a bullet journal and use gel pens or markers or whatever. And the colors just seem to be more vibrant on this paper, but it's a presentation, a printer presentation paper. So it has a little bit of a uh, different feel. It's a smooth texture. So anyway, so then we have our two decorative pieces, and these are the papers that I chose. It's a, another butterfly and just a blue background. And these pieces are cut at, um, you need two pieces, one, uh, or actually they're both the same, I'm sorry, three and three eighths inch by two and an eighth inch across. So if you have a designer paper that's directional or has a pattern you want on the front or the back, because they are going to be opposite, this one, this is the front here this way, and if you flip it over, it's upside down. I chose to do mine both this way because I'm going to tuck it in a pocket as such, but you can also alternate them so when you flip it this way, this one would also be directional to you. That's total preference. So this here is um, the pieces we're going to put on the front and the back. So I like to have my front piece standing up towards me um, so that I know that that's where I want to put this one. I cut these just a bit larger because I'll show you in a second. Um, I round my corners. You don't have to. Again, you can see you could cut it just to fit exactly onto the um, fold of paper, but I like the rounded look. It just looks a little more finished to me, my preference. And so I choose to round my corners. So we're gonna round the corners on that one. Sorry. And we're gonna round the corners on this one. And you can use a chomper, a rounder, punch, whatever you choose. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make this one so that it's opposite. But before I do that, I'm going to, again, optional, um, I'm going to ink the edges of my paper. Um, I have a new blender here, so we'll see. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of edging so take the white away I thought the darker color it's actually a dark brown it almost looks black I almost went black but to try and make the darker colors in the butterfly pop a little bit I decided to use a darker color I could have used a tone on tone color but I'm gonna try one this way so that's as easy as that cover my ink back up here because I'm good at sticking my fingers in everything and getting ink everywhere. So we have that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this front piece and we're going to attach it to the top of this. 
And so how I do that is I use a glue stick, a permanent glue stick. Um, it seems to work good. And I just glue the top piece here. Make sure I get all the corners covered really well. And I probably should have a piece of paper under me, but this does sit up a little bit, so I think I'll be okay. And then we're just going to attach this as centered as possible. Trying to cover up our corners. And our corners are still going to stick out. And this is what I was trying to say about the corner rounder. If you wanted to cut it a little bit larger even than I did. Well, it's not very centered, is it? Maybe if we went from this side, we could see better. And this is not easy, of course, when you're trying to film. And since this is my first attempt at filming in a tutorial, of course it's going to act up. And I think we're going to call that good for the purpose of the video. You might fuss with it a little bit longer, a little bit more, but it worked. The corners are covered. You can see the tab, but you do not want to trim those off because if you do, you'll end up with holes in the middle of your paper. So don't trim those off. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this so that when I flip it, that this is going to be directional. Um, because it does have some writing on it and this one's a little bit easier to do because you can just stand it up against the other one and attach it. So let's go ahead and add the glue. Hope I'm covering it all. I can't see it very well. That looks pretty covered to me. Right along the edge here, maybe. Okay, I think that's good. And then this one, we can just stand it up a little bit here. And you can eyeball the, line it up. And it lines up a lot easier. And then you just press really well to make sure all your corners get attached. Give it a little pressure. And give it a little pressure on this side. And it's as easy as that. So then when you hold your paper, it's going to, whoops, get my thimble fingers in there. It's going to open as such close and the more you play with it the easier it opens and closes as you can see and then you have your full sheet here where you can do a bullet journal or what have you the other thing I thought that was or could be fun is I have several letters from my grandmother from when I was young and she lived in a different state and so we would write back and forth. And I have several of the letters that she sent me when I was a little girl. And I thought it would be really fun. The one-sided letters, now this would not necessarily be um, feasible to do with a two-sided letter. Unless you had a lot of space to put your corner um, pieces. But you could even just fold it like this and... And put it in a little envelope and put it in your journal as well. But I thought it would be really fun to take some of the letters that she sent me and decorate them with little colored paper on the one side of letters. Or just even on the front letter and then just fold the others into it. Um, so that I could save them in a journal. And that way I could kind of tuck them. They'd be a little, still be a little more private than anybody just opening it up and reading it. 
and I, I don't know. I'm going to try it and see if it works but you can also make these any size you'd like you just need to whatever size your paper you need to make sure you fold it in half make it a, the W shape or like this one um, it was a larger piece of paper and there were several folds to it um, they didn't even line up the top of the paper it's just centered so you can do several different things with it but I just thought it was really fun how it just opened and closed so easy and fun by itself um, again you can decorate it with a belly band I think I will find something I maybe even some ribbon I might just put some ribbon on this one some silver ribbon or something um, but you can just put a belly band on it glue it right where it folds then it just slides right off, off and on. So anyway, that's just a quick tutorial um, on how I did this and came up with this little idea. Um, give it a try. Maybe share some pictures um, on Instagram. I am uh, Just Because Crafter on Instagram. You can request to follow me and um, share your ideas or your pictures. I'd love to see them. I'd like to see some other people try this because it is it's really quick and it's really fun and you can just about do as much or as little with it as you'd like so I have those um, I'll lay these out one more time really quick so you can um, just take off the list here and while you're doing that maybe I'll give you a second here I was going to share how I've started my journal and I'm going to just do that really quick so hopefully you get a screenshot of that and play with it and have fun so then a couple of people have asked uh, about my journal and again I've said it's not finished it's not even close but I'll share what I have so far I um made this from a plastic cutting mat that you use on your counter to cut your vegetables or what have you on. My dad was always picking them up at the swap meets in Arizona or wherever <laughs> when he'd go and he'd come home and we always got packages so I have several packages of them and I thought I was looking for a placemat or something to follow um, Dana's tutorial that she did one out of a plastic placemat and I didn't have any and so I went ahead and searched around and I found this and I thought oh, okay and then I had this mulberry paper that I've had for years that my grandfather bought me because I thought it was so cool at a fabric store when we were shopping for curtain material for his windows and so I've had this and thought all kinds of things to do with it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use it on the inside of this journal so it shows through. And I just zigzagged it with gold thread on my sewing machine. And it sewed through really easy. I think I might do some kind of a sealant or a Mod Podge or something to preserve the paper so it doesn't start breaking and falling apart because it does have real leaves in it and it's got real fibers in it that you can see through but I just thought it was so cool so I have that little memory tucked into it just to start with and then this I made from a dirndl buckle on that my grandma was from Germany and she had a friend that lived in Germany that she was friends with all through her adult life um, actually they reacquainted themselves many years after my grandma had moved back here and so she always sent these really ornate buttons and clips and latches and all kinds of just fun stuff and my mom would make dirndls and so forth for my grandma well this was one of the buckles that was um, not used and so I turned it into my belly band for my journal so 
just latches closed as such. But I put it on elastic so I didn't have to open and close it. So that's what that is. So another piece of my memories. <laughs> Anyway, and then I did three different journals, and I'm just going to set this aside because it doesn't want to stay closed very easily yet. So I did three signatures, and they're just in pieces because I have not put anything together permanent. Um, so my little flowers. So I'll start with this. I just put a little envelope in here with attached some little stickers and dimensional um, ephem um what do they call them? Stickers, dimensional stickers, I guess. And then I just put the little wrap envelope and stamped it and some little button stamps. And this is just a little pack of goodies I'm going to um, add in here that I have made copies or stickers. I don't know. It doesn't all want to come out, but... These are just things I'm going to add to the pages and so far. Some little ephemera stuff. This was just a printout that I'm going to make a tag. And then some little flowers. It's really pretty. More botanical things, little flowers. I don't know if you can see these very well. Anyway, they're just little botanical printouts that I did. And some little flower seed printouts. Anyway, I'm just going to use them in my journal. I'm not selling them. I don't know that they're usable that way, so I'm not going to even try. But anyway, they were just really vintage and really pretty, so I did those. And then this I printed from my grandmother it was in her journal um, when she moved from Germany to the States um, back in 19, I want to say 28 or 29. Um, she was a young girl and she had a journal and this little angel card, ephemera piece, whatever, um, was in her journal. And so I just copied it onto photo paper so that I can use it in my journal. So I thought that was a lot of fun. And this is just a printed out postcard back. And then I did this little envelope flip and added paper in a little tuck spot here. And some printed on paper, some graph paper from, oh, uh, who knows, I have a bunch of stuff that came from my grandfather's stuff, my mom's house, whatever, a picture frame that's got embossed corners, I'll apply that somewhere. Um, this is a, one of the little um, entries in my grandma's journal. I just thought it was really cute. Um, it says, in my rosary of friendship, there's one uh, pearl of lustrous hue that holds a prayer and blessing rare for no one else but you, just you, your friend. And it was from one of my grandma's friends. And I thought that was really pretty. So I copied it out of her journal and I'm going to make a journaling tag for it. And I made this little pocket and it's going to be attached to a page and it has a little slide spot here that I punched out. And just a couple little tags that I will um, tuck in there. Little journal tags. And a little dragonfly paper clip for the top. Just to hold whatever. And this is another um, little pocket. It's a folded pocket. And it has a spot here for... I think I'm going to cut a tag to make in there, and then I just stitched. This is from um, a dictionary page, an old, old dictionary page from my grandparents' house, and so I've been using that. And these were some of his pricing sheets. He was a, a electrical engineer, and so I found these in some of his old things, so I tea stained a bunch of them, and 
save those. And this was a round card base that I have. I don't know where I collected it, somewhere in the days. And so I just folded it down and folded I'm going to make a little pocket um, attachment in there. So I'll do something with that. Just some colored printed journaling pages. And then this is a page I created. Um, and I really like this. I wish I would have thought before I glued it together. But this is an accordion page um, that's going to go in the center here. And I made, I folded up and added some lace and some trim. And then I made these um, tags to put inside. And I just did some of the gathered ribbon and I stamped on some muslin and added a stamp. I have a lot of European and old stamps. My mom used to work in a billing department. And um, so she used to save all her stamps for me. I was a stamp collector when I was in elementary school with a few of my friends so I have a lot of old stamps that are just um, used and so forth and then my grandfather my grandmother of course she saved all her European stamps for me and so forth so I had a lot of people helping me out so I have a good stash on them so I made this one here I just tucked some ribbon and a piece of torn paper and stamped I have this set of these four bird stamps and it was perfect for this so I used this and stitched around the edge. And again, it's journaling on the back. And this one is vellum with the stamped muslin and a piece of ephemera paper or something. So I tucked that one. And again, I just did layered paper and stitched around the edge, journaling on the back. And my favorite little hummingbird and it's stamped really well on that paper. So then it just closes up like this when you fold the page over. Whoops, went too far. Sorry. So it closes as such. I'm going to have to reach in to poke my holes to add my signature into my book. And that's where I wish I would have thought to wait to attach this to the cardstock until after it was entered in the, the signature was entered in the journal front but that's okay I'll make it work and then I thought it would be really fun to add a coloring page so I'm going to add this coloring page to my journal I think I'm just going to put a belly band or something to tuck it in so I can pull it out and journal on it or color on it and another journaling page and another tea dyed page and then this is a actual copy and I downsized it but this is an actual copy from a photo envelope from my grandma's things that she had some negatives in and it's an actual photo um, so I copied that to make um, either a pocket or a tuck or journaling card and then I also copied the back that has her name and <laughs> her house address and the street I don't think it has everything but anyway um, it was back from 1948 I think is the date on it 6 18 48 so that's kind of special because that was from her stash of pictures and I still have the envelope and then I did another tuck envelope with a music tag and just a stamp and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that if I'm going to make it a tuck. I don't like the bugs. So I'll probably do a tuck, corner tuck or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. So that. Oh, and then there's the back side of the graph paper and so forth. And then I did. Uh, this is the back of the envelope. I made a pocket and I printed out this little postcard that I'm going to make a journaling card with. And then this is the back of that signature. So that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Might be a little full. And then the second signature is not quite as um, bulky. But again, my birds. And this is the front page. And some journaling page. And some more 
dyed paper. These I haven't really um, added much to yet, but they're just a lot of journaling pages. And then I did this little card with a little belly band to tuck. And the front is a little pocket. I don't know if you can see. This is just a little pocket here. And it opens up so you can journal. And I stitched the pockets down with gold thread. So that'll be. And then this is another piece of really small graph tea stain paper. And I think I'm going to do some more tea staining maybe tomorrow. I took my... I had some really constant actually coffee stain I had some really concentrated coffee that I'd used for a couple things and I thought gosh I really didn't want to throw it away so I threw it in the freezer in a container and froze it so I'm gonna pull it out of the freezer let it thaw out and um, at least get another use out of it I thought by freezing it it would be okay so we'll see how that works but anyway so this is just some more pages tea stain I added a little piece of tape to that because when I folded it, it started ripping. Um, the paper is really old to start with, and then when I tea stained it. So I just added a little support. And then I have a little flower paper clip here to hold this little folded. Um, I'm probably going to add some ephemera and pictures or something to that and make a journal tuck out of it and then that's the back for journaling and this is just some paper that I wanted to add in here so that one's still in the makings for adding things to it and then the last one is again um, how did I do this yes that is the front and then I made this little journal tuck and I did this <laughs> I get kind of over crazy sometimes but I just thought this was really pretty I've seen the ones that fold up I've done the ones that fold up like the waterfall picture frames or what have you but I made this little base card and I'm going to attach this down to the page and I took the piece of paper and I cut it every mm, I want to say half inch I'm not sure you can do whatever but I did the width of the space above the red line on these index cards and so then I made little tucks and so they tucked every distance that I cut the paper and so now I can just do little journal cards and it will go like this and it just adds to the picture when you write on them and all the writing is hidden because um, because it's tucked into the overlapped in the journal. So the only page you'll see is the front page, the front piece. And then you just add back into the journal. So you can take them out right on them one at a time. You can write a story and just stagger it all the way down. Um, you can write notes, you can, whatever. You can do whatever you want with it. But I just thought it was kind of a tedious, fun thing. I must have needed some no-brainer something to think about besides life anyway so I did that and then these are just some more pages it's another envelope I'm gonna tuck stuff I did some green um, stain paper I have uh, all the Stampin' Up! inks and refills and so I used um, some of the refill colors to do the colors on this I just put a little bit in my coffee stain or else I overstained them and I think I, this must be flowers. Yep, flowers I think I'm gonna put on that. Maybe Mod Podge or something. And some more graph paper. And a little envelope that I'm going to probably leave open for a journaling spot. And just attach the back. So that um, it can be like an open envelope. Some more journaling. I did these off of some practice um, penmanship paper. I don't know if you remember that or if they still do that. I know they don't do a lot of cursive in school anymore, which makes me sad. But anyway, um, another envelope and another journaling page. 
and the end. So that's where we're at. I have papers. Now I just have a lot of decorating to do. I did make some of these little tags I'm going to add. Um, I did these with inks. And I made this little envelope pocket. And I just did some multicolored paint and stamped with my little hummingbird stamp. You can't see it real well. I was still playing with it. This one's better. You can see the hummingbird. I have that. And then I did a tag. And I'm probably going to do some ephemera and inking, stamping something on this. Maybe Mod Podge some papers. And this is just my little butterfly stamp that I colored. And I'll probably cut it out and use it to add to something. And then I was just playing around with this other little stamp I have. Kind of vintage. So I was just doodling one night and decided to color her. So I'll probably add that to my journal. But other than that, um, I have this little bag that I keep my journal in. I found at my mom's house when we were cleaning out her house. She had a couple of them and my journal fits in it perfect. And I purchased uh, Tuesday morning a set of gel pens to do my coloring page so when I want to doodle or need to keep my hands busy I have that so with that um, hopefully I'll get that journal done soon and we can do a flip through when it's finished and I think that's it for now so go try out the little um, bullet journals or letter savers or I, I don't know what to call them but go give it a try and um, you'll see how fun it is how easy it is and if you have any questions just leave um, your questions down below and I will try and get to them and get answers for you or share with you whatever you need so until then um, happy crafting smiles are free share them and I'll see you all later bye